Welcome on back to Skipper Say. I have five tips to help you win your fantasy baseball leagues. Before we get into those five tips, we are on the road to 30,000 subscribers, so do not forget to subscribe. Also, join the Discord. We're getting closer to opening day, a lot more fun stuff coming your way. Let's get into the tips. The first tip is the most brain dead simple tip you could ever get when you are playing fantasy sports, and that is to be active. You absolutely have to be active if you want to win. A lot of my friends will play in a league, and you never want to be that guy on the receiving end of your friends coming up to you and saying, thanks for playing this year. Thank you for your donation. Thank you for donating your money to us to win this fantasy baseball league as you are in last place and you have done absolutely nothing since draft day. Being active starts with prep, pre-draft. It goes into lineup decisions. It goes to being active on the waiver wire and making sure you're up to date with injury news as well. Unless everyone else in your league is inactive or dies somehow, it's going to be really tough to win your league if you're inactive. The second tip is that upside helps you win your league. There is a spot on everyone's fantasy baseball team for high floor guys and bounce back, and I love a lot of those as well. But having upside work to your advantage will always be a driving factor in helping you win your league. We can take three players from the American League last year that are prime examples of this. We have to look at Dylan Cease, Shane McClanahan, and Julio Rodriguez. All these guys were drafted outside of the top five rounds last season. Dylan Cease put on a masterclass of a 10 starts where he was one of the best pitchers in all of baseball. Shane McClanahan, taken, I think, outside the seventh round last season, was my ace on my fantasy teams that helped me win a league last year. And then Julio Rodriguez, I believe, taken outside of the 10th round last season. Again, there are worries about him making teams out of camp. That's why I like drafting closer to opening day instead of say, you know, two weeks before this video is going to come out. I don't enjoy doing that. There's so much that can go on with injuries and training camp as well. But those three guys are perfect examples of why upside helps you win. I don't think you necessarily want to chase upside with your first, say, four round picks because you, when you have a solid core that has helped solidify your team, you need to try and then go out and hit home runs, not hit home runs from your opening pick. Those three guys broke out in a huge way last season, and a guy I think that'll be kind of similar and that type of thing is going to be Gunnar Henderson. Hitting on these players will have you well on your way to winning your fantasy baseball leagues. Third tip is that draft capital does not matter. Unless you're playing a dynasty where you can trade for picks, if you're just playing a classic redraft league every season, as soon as opening day hits, as soon as these guys are on your team, it does not matter where you drafted them. And do not be holding on to those players solely based on draft day values. So if you made a bad third round pick and they just can't seem to figure out, do not hold on to them. If all the numbers and all the metrics three quarters halfway into the season are telling you that they're not performing up to their standard. To me, this is a Luis Castillo thing that happened about two years ago. Did happen two years ago, 2021. He was a high, maybe my third round pick. I was playing in a 14, 15 team league and he was droppable by the third month of the season. I just wanted to hold on to Luis Castillo, but, and I would play him every single time. Of course, you'd rather try and trade these guys instead of just dropping them outright, but these can really be a detriment to your team if you play them nonstop just because you took them in your third round and say, oh, it doesn't matter the matchup he's going to be in. I think they'll be able to figure out and he's better than that doesn't always work that way. Once these guys are officially on your roster, it no longer matters where you took them on draft day, just how much they can help your team at the time. This video is brought to you by Peace Collective. If you're looking to rep your team this season, Peace Collective is the perfect place to start if you're looking for merch. You can get 10% off promo code OWNERSBOX10 at Peace Collective when you check out. My fourth tip is gonna be finding better evaluation stats for players. Although most of our leagues are defined by ERA, wins, batting average, it doesn't necessarily tell you how good a player is going to be or how good they have been. To me, there's so much baseball stat statistics, advanced analytics that tell you how good a player is or how they've performed so far. And they're just very, very open to you to use at your pleasure. Instead of using ERA, use FIP that you can find on Fangrass, Fielding Independent Pitching Score, or Sierra, which is Skill Interactive ERA, or Stackhouse even expected ERA. Even a simpler thing that they stated is just trust the pitcher's whip over their ERA as well. Another thing we like to look at is strikeouts minus walk percentage. That can tell you obviously how well he's doing as well, but there's just so many different things. You can look at spin on pitcher's list. You can look baseball savant to tell you chase rates, things like that. And then as well, the FIP you'll get from fan graphs. All these things that are very easy for you to access, you should be using them. Say we're looking for hitters on the wire. I think 
just a way you can do this is you go on fan graphs, you sort by weighted on base average and weighted runs created, plus in the advanced section, and you say we sort over the last week, over the last two weeks, you see a player's been doing. So you can find the hot guy, sort by how that's going. Obviously, the guys at the top are going to be the guys who are highly rostered and helping people win their leagues as well. But there will be some guys available on your wire that you can pick up, and I think that is a good way to do it. And the last tip is going to be finding volume. Having a bottom three guy on a really good team isn't always better than having a leadoff hitter on a really bad team. Looking at some of the numbers, there is an 18 plate difference between the team's number one and number two hitters, which isn't crazy over 162 game schedule, but it does represent an advantage based on where they are hitting in the batting lineup. Although the big difference between say a number two and number seven hitter in a lineup is about 86 plate appearances. That is a massive difference and especially in points leagues where you need people to get at bats to help you get those points, that is a huge opportunity for you to take advantage of. I think that just a simple way to find this on your wires, you're gonna go to fan graphs, you're gonna go the last two weeks, sort by that time period, then you sort by plate appearances again, there'll be a lot of the guys who are at the top of the league, but then you find your guys who you're just kind of surprised about. Like, for example, yes, you're Ruiz, if he's gonna lead off for the Oakland A's, sure, some of the volume might not be there, but he can help you with stolen base attempts. He can help you getting runs. It'll be everything different. It's just a different way to look at finding volume that can help you win. Those are my five tips to help you win your fantasy baseball league. Let me know what you guys think. If you have any other helpful tips that you would tell people who are not in your leagues as well, do not forget to subscribe, join the Discord, and I will see you guys tomorrow.